Hello and welcome to Volusia Magazine. I'm Amber Osman. In this week's episode, the Department of Health has no-cost physicals available for many of the county's school-aged children. The UCF Incubator and Volusia County agree to continue their partnership. And an Edgewater company is recognized as a Florida company to watch. Later in the program, Joanne Magley sits down with Dennis Mudge from the Volusia County Extension Service. Those segments and more coming right up on Volusia Magazine. I hope you stay tuned. The Department of Health in Volusia County is making it easier for parents to get their children ready to go back to school in just a few weeks. Classes resume in Volusia County schools on Monday, August 14th. The department is offering no-cost school physicals for children who are current on their vaccinations. While vaccines are often thought of as something for babies and young children, preteens and teens also need vaccines to stay healthy through the school year. Jacqueline Butler, a nurse of the Department of Health, says when children are not vaccinated, they are at an increased risk for diseases and can also spread diseases to others in their classrooms and community. So by giving the no-cost physicals, um, and we can make sure they immunizations of the day and they can get their 680 forms at the same time, they'll be prepared for the first day of school. If your child is not up to date on vaccinations, the department can help with that too. Child immunizations always are offered at no cost at the Department of Health locations. For kindergarten and pre-K, kindergarten and seventh grade, they have to have an up-to-date immunization. Um, and so even with uh, seventh grade, before they can get their schedule, they have to show proof of immunization. So that's one of the important reasons why um, we encourage immunizations because it's an entry requirement. Appointments are not needed for vaccinations, but they are needed for school physicals. The department has three Volusia County locations open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. The locations are in Daytona Beach, New Smyrna Beach, and Orange City. For more information on immunizations, please visit volusiahealth.com shots. The UCF Incubator Program at Daytona Beach International Airport will continue their partnership with Volusia County through at least September of 2020. The Volusia County Council recently approved a three-year extension of the project funding agreement for $250,000 per year. Volusia County began the partnership with UCF in 2010 with the opening of the Daytona Beach International Airport Incubator located at 601 Innovation Way on the east end of the airport. The $250,000 goes towards management of the program. In return, the incubator provides mentoring and, in many cases, office space to companies in the startup phase of their business. The 8,000 square foot facility at Daytona Beach International Airport is the ninth incubator operated by UCF. It's part of the county's Center of Innovation and Technology and is adjacent to the Emory Riddle Aeronautical University Next Gen Test Center for the Federal Aviation Agency, located at the eastern end of the international terminal of the airport. UCF has seen impressive progress with its participants. Nearly 87% of incubator graduates are in business five years later, compared to a national average of less than 45% for small business owners who are not incubator graduates. Over 80% of graduates remain in the community. Upon graduation of the incubator program, companies typically have 7 to 15 employees and annual revenues over $1 million. The Daytona Beach International Airport Incubator currently has 19 clients.
well-balanced diet is a key component to a healthy lifestyle. In this week's Solutions for Your Life, Volusia County's Extension Agent Lisa Hamilton has details on ways of reducing and even replacing sodium in many of our recipes. Welcome to Solutions for Your Life. I'm Lisa Hamilton, University of Florida IFAS Extension Agent in Volusia County. Earlier this year, we talked about the importance of eating healthy. Across the year at the Extension Office, we work with many community groups to provide nutrition education. One example of that is our great partnership with Volusia County Head Start. I've learned there are purple potatoes out there, um, different ways to grow different herbs and oregano to season your food with. Families from Volusia County Head Start are invited to the Extension Office for a half-day nutrition program that includes classes and a trip to the Deland Farmers Market. Our team covers a variety of nutrition topics. Rethink Your Drink teaches parents the importance of reducing sugar in beverages for the whole family by adding more water, milk, and 100% fruit juices. The program includes how to read product labels to identify added sugars like high fructose corn syrup, sucrose, dextrose and molasses. Rosemary is one of my favorite plants because it's... Extension staff offered an activity on growing herbs for use in the kitchen to help reduce salt intake. The participants painted flower pots and planted rosemary and oregano to take home. Rosemary and oregano are two herbs that are easy to grow and taste great in a variety of recipes. Today I learned to use less salt and use more herbs. It gives the food just as much flavor, if not more, and it's actually a lot healthier for your family. It is important to reduce salt in your diet to help reduce blood pressure. The recommended amount of salt for an average American with no risk of high blood pressure is 2,100 milligrams per day, which is about one teaspoon of salt per day. For people with risk factors of high blood pressure, no more than 1,600 milligrams of salt per day is recommended, which is about three quarters of a one teaspoon per day. We do have fresh garlic. Patrick Zayas, Family Nutrition Program Manager, and I invited the participants into the extension kitchen for a demonstration on cooking without salt. We used fresh rosemary, oregano, garlic, and pepper to season roasted vegetables that we prepared for the families. We seasoned potatoes, green and red peppers, onions, carrots, and Brussels sprouts with herbs and roasted them in the oven at 450 degrees for 15 minutes until they were soft and brown. This recipe was a big hit and it is a fast, healthy recipe for a weeknight family dinner. You can prepare the vegetables that your family likes to eat. So keep in mind, there are many great replacements for sugar and salt that still taste great. With Solutions for Your Life, I'm Lisa Hamilton. Doherty Manufacturing in Edgewater has been selected as one of 50 Florida companies to watch for 2017. This recognition comes from Grow Florida, a statewide economic development organization certified by the National Center for Economic Gardening through the Edward Lowe Foundation. The competition honors 50 select second stage companies for developing valuable products and services, creating quality jobs, and creating new industries throughout Florida. Doherty Manufacturing was established in 2012 by Stephen and Sarah Doherty. Based out of a garage, they specialized in customized truck beds for a firm in Georgia. In five years, the firm has grown into one of the most versatile metal and fiberglass reinforced plastic manufacturers in the southeast with a state-of-the-art 200,000 square foot facility in Edgewater. Since 2012, Volusia County businesses who have received the honor have included crane cams in Daytona Beach in 2012, Tactical Machining in DeLand in 2013, Quantum Flow in DeBerry in 2014, Synergy Billing in Daytona Beach in 2015, and CO2 Meter in Ormond Beach in 2016. It's just, it seems like people seem to be able to find a niche and, and try different things. Uh, one thing, you know, a lot, a lot of entrepreneurs will do is uh, they'll try one thing. If it works, uh, great. If it doesn't, they'll they'll kind of tend to move on to something else. So it, it, it it's, a, it's a special person that, that's an entrepreneur. 
Um, there's also a lot of awareness and also uh, a lot of camaraderie, um, different organizations um, that are there to help support the entrepreneurs. Eligible applicants must be privately held second stage commercial enterprises. They must also be headquartered in Florida, employ between 6 and 150 employees, and earn between $750,000 and $100 million in annual revenue. For more information, you can contact Virgil Kimball with Volusia County's Economic Development Division at 386-248-8048 or vkimball at volusia.org. If you're thinking about buying a new computer, school supplies, or clothing, you might want to wait until this weekend. Florida's sales tax holiday begins at 12.01 a.m. Friday, August 4th, and ends at 11.59 p.m. on Sunday, August 6th. The sales tax holiday is a budget-friendly option for families who are preparing for the school year. Not only is there no sales tax, but many stores are planning big sales as an added incentive to shoppers. During the sales tax holiday, no sales tax will be collected on purchases of certain school supplies selling for $15 or less per item, clothing, shoes, and some accessories selling for $60 or less, personal computers and certain computer-related accessories selling for $750 or less per item when purchased for personal use. Online purchases of qualified items will be tax-free, but the sales tax holiday does not apply to books, staplers, or computer paper. For details about Florida's sales tax holiday, you can visit floridarevenue.com. This summer, Volusia County hosted a variety of camps for kids. At Lyonia Environmental Center in Deltona, children experienced the county's natural wonders through guided hikes, live animal encounters, and environmentally themed games. Gary Daniels gives us an inside look at the Eco Adventures. summer camp because it's a really fun summer camp and you learn a lot and you have fun at the same time and you get to go on hikes. Noel, you're important for the scrub jays because they help them make their nest. Yes, scrub jays use these to line the inside of their nest. Very good. The Lyonia Environmental Center is a center that's open to the public. We're open every day of the week and we offer public programs. The summer camp program runs for eight weeks. The focus each week is different. We cover all kinds of environmental topics and each week consists of uh, nature hikes as well as um, time spent with our live animals. They get to meet and greet some live animals. We have great guest speakers that come and visit and talk on a variety of environmental topics. You guys have probably seen these around. One of my favorite animals I saw today was the boa because I like snakes and I just think snakes are one of the coolest creatures. My favorite animal I saw today was an alligator because I never got the same one in like a person not behind glass and stuff. I got to touch it. In our um, exhibit gallery, we have a lot of interactive um, exhibits as well as some games that they can play that help um, facilitate learning about scrub habitat. We also have live animal ambassadors. We have a guinea pig, five snakes, and a couple lizards. So they get to meet those as well as have a touch tank experience with marine invertebrates and they learn about how Lyonia Preserve area was once ancient beach. So this is called a giant answer questions about things that they've learned. I like seeing them having a great time learning and they don't realize how much they're actually learning and they just think it's fun. So that, that for me is really fun. What is the name of this tree? Gregory. Rusty Lyonia. Very good. I love kids to come to camp because it's fun and it helps you small stuff about animals. My favorite part of summer camp was seeing the bats because they were cute. 
We have a lot of kids that come from a variety of backgrounds, um, and it's great that they can come together and make new friends from different areas, learn different cultures even, and um, they have a great time. My favorite part of summer camp was that I got to meet new people and make new friends, and I got to learn so much more about animals. My favorite part of summer camp was going on hikes. Uh, I feel it's really important for them to learn about the area that they live in, um, to learn about endangered species and ways that they, even at a young age, can, can start that thought process of, of what can I do to make a difference. And so for me, it's very rewarding and I, I love being able to teach them and just see a spark of interest and, and see them actually retain some of this information that will carry on into their future lives. Let's go now to Community Information Director Joanne Magley and her guest, Dennis Mudge, Director of Volusia County's Agricultural Extension. Thanks, Amber. Well, Volusia County's agricultural operations have a significant impact on the local economy, and the products grown here are sold throughout the world. So with us today in the studio to talk about an update on the ag industry is Dennis Mudge, the director of the University of Florida Volusia County Cooperative Extension Service. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning. And um, we talked that that was a mouthful, your uh, your agency's name, and but people know it um, better by... Another term called IFAS. And uh, it's IFAS, the Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences, which is kind of a cool way to mention it. Yeah, so your, your agency is really a hybrid. It's part University of Florida and part county service. So how does that, um, what is that role and, and the connection and how, how do both work together? Right, well, way back in 1865, Way back. President Lincoln was involved with starting land-grant colleges, one in every state in the country. The idea being, we need some research to help us here in America, and we're going to establish these colleges. And then by, by 1914, they discovered that research was getting to the kids that went there and went to school, but it wasn't getting out to the people. Mm. And that's how they established the Extension Service, which would be an extension of that research right into the counties, and we would have county agents who would be state employees and county employees in every county in the nation, and they would take that research to the people. And it's been a model that's been copied around the world. It's in most other countries, too. So uh, taking the research to farmers and to, uh, actually, to more than farmers mm -hmm. when, it, when it first started, right? Yeah, when we started, it was there because 90% of our society were farmers. Today, it's 3% of the farmers who feed all of us. And so you think about it, well, these are solutions for your life. We all need that research. If we're going to continue to better in Volusia County, we need the research, we need the up-to-date things, and we cover so many different departments from the university that bring that right into the county, and even in the 4-H program as well as to the adult programs, and still the farmers, right. because we're still true to that original group that we worked with, but now everybody. So speaking of farming, uh, give us an update on farming in Volusia County. What What is the most... Um what do we farm the most? Uh, what are some new initiatives that are happening in, in farming? Uh, it's a perfect time for you to ask that question because the USDA is doing its egg census in 2017, the end of the season here. This is where the survey gets set, sent out to the farmers and we find out who they are. Mm -hmm. We're adding about a farm a month in this county with people who are raising vegetables and, and uh, other commodities and um, livestock to sell. Uh, that's amazing to me. If you think about it, then we're, we're at 1,400 farms in the county, and we go up all the time. 10% uh, increase uh, over five years. Mm. That's neat. Most counties are decreasing. Is that in an their increase farms, in the number of farms? In the numbers of farms. Now, they're smaller than they mm -hmm. used to be. They're averaging about 75 acres. A lot of them are only 10 acres, but they're growing food for all of us, and we all need safe 
food grown organically in different ways that really makes it good. And gosh, that's going on here in Volusia County, and I'm excited for it. You know, you see it on Wednesday nights, if, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday days, if you come over to our office mm -hmm. to the farmer's market and you see all the producers in there selling their goods, you're pretty excited yeah. to have the locals here to do that. And our local farming industry, there is a lot of diversity. I know a few years back, the newer um, item was olives, right. right? Yeah, because of the whole idea of leaf extract and the idea that maybe it would help with cancer. And so that yeah, was, it's a big deal and still an interest today. Uh, one of the things I hear talk about a lot these days is blueberries because mm. here we go again with something that's very nutritious for you that some people don't include in their diet and they should and now we've got blueberry growers and just a lot of neat things but you know we still have the traditional farmers the fern growers are here in major industry uh, as well as the livestock producers mm -hmm. and still an important part of the the whole production in the county what would you say the biggest challenges are for farmers here in Volusia County I'd say that their economic line to success and failure is much closer than people realize. They, they can go under as fast as new farms can start. And it can be a, a, the hurricane that came through. Mm -hmm. It can be the horrible drought we experienced this last year that can put some farmers out of business. They're really dependent on the weather. They're really dependent on how the market goes. Uh, maybe they're selling internationally and how that goes. Um, and their line for profit margins closer than it should be. That's why we need to buy local and support mm -hmm. local and be involved with these kinds of things so that the farming community keeps going and we don't pave all of Volusia County. And I would imagine that that's one reason why the farmers should maybe diversify as much as they can so that if if one crop or one you know one area might suffer one season then they have something to fall back on or if they do dive into the international market then they they open themselves up for um, another market that previously didn't know about their product. Sure, that's exactly right. Diversification is one of the things we teach out of our office because we hold classes for the farmers as well. And we teach them to diversify so that if whatever commodity they've got, the price dips in that severely, they've got something else. And also that can give them products year round, seasonal. That's real important because you know we grow so much of our crops in the winter time in Florida that what are you gonna sell the other times of year? And mm -hmm. so you need to be thinking about that and uh, you make that land pay. If you're gonna pay the taxes on it and have that land and have it in production, you need to make it pay back. And I imagine now, we, you know, the internet has been around now for a while, but farmers have to uh, have some sort of internet component really to help keep themselves successful, and I'm sure that goes hand in hand with inter international sales. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be excited to see the video marketing and, and uh, the, you know, people buying by video from the farmers now, mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty neat. Uh, all that and then the new technology that's in with the drones and all the remote sensing and even uh, robots that go right by and tell exactly the right time to get the crop and wow. yeah science is a big part of it and part of that science that's learned on the farm is learned in our 4-H clubs as well you know we have those types of clubs that are learning that kind of technology uh, more than they can even get in the public school. Yeah talk a little bit more about 4-H because 4-H as you were saying earlier it's one of the the, you said top five symbols <laughs> in yeah, the world. The 4-H club. And there's 4-H clubs all over the world. Yeah. Uh, tell us the importance about 4-H, which is under your, um, the you know, the Ag Center's umbrella. Tell us about the importance of 4-H and, and what it does for our kids. Well, you know, there are alumni everywhere. So you meet people and you find out this person was a 4-H alumni and they went through I'm a 4-H alumni. Mm -hmm. We all end up being products of these types of things. And then it kind of gets in your blood where you really realize how exciting it is. Five kids in the neighborhood picking a name for their own club, convincing their parents to be volunteer leaders. We train them and they can learn anything out of the University of Florida and projects that they can do in their clubs. They bring them to the upcoming fair and exhibit those things on a public display. It's a place for kids to succeed other than school. 
You know, a lot of our kids just don't quite fit in the school. Maybe they'll mm -hmm. do better when they get to college. But 4-H is a cool place to do things you wouldn't do otherwise and uh, really can help kids growing up. And, and the studies have shown it keeps kids out of trouble. Even a lot of the kids who are brilliant, who end up in trouble with the law, mm -hmm. wouldn't have been if they had been involved in 4-H. And most people, when they think of 4-H, like myself, we just think of, okay, you're raising, you're raising an animal or you're growing vegetables but as you uh, taught me just uh, you know earlier today there are so many different clubs that might not have anything to do with farming per se because it all goes back to whatever is um, being taught at the university that's exactly right so is the University of Florida only farming these days no right. it's one of the best institutions in the world and so diversified and as that agency is divers or that university is diversified that like that so is our county office and so are these 4-H clubs 30 clubs in this county, that's a huge program. Laura Cash works with over 100 volunteers running all those clubs. She's like a, a principal of a big school working with all those children in 30 clubs. Every city, every area of this county's got a 4-H club. You can get your kids in 4-H and find out this is really cool stuff. All right, before we leave you, let's talk about one of your big uh, events that you do every year. You do, you host the farm tour and it's always on the Friday before Thanksgiving. And it's really a great opportunity for people to explore uh, the farms here in Volusia County. That's right. We have an east and a west tour and it's a volunteer tour where you drive yourself around on the schedule to meet with these farmers firsthand. You know what happens afterwards? <laughs> Often you end up buying your produce there later because mm -hmm. you meet these cool people and you find out maybe you can have a, a financial investment in that farm and come back regularly get wow. vegetables there. You open yourself to a whole new world you didn't even know existed and uh, so the farm tour on that Friday before Thanksgiving, so well attended, uh, just a very large amount of people, and, and so good. And, you know, we've been doing it for so many years that it's one of the big events of the county. Yeah, all right. So if people want to learn more about the program, you offer um, programs regularly at the Ag Center, yes, and sometimes do. you take those programs out into the community as well. So mm -hmm. how can people uh, find out more about the programs you offer, more about 4-H, or there's anything about IPIS? Sure. Yeah, you can find us on the Internet. You can also find us right over at what people think of, well, the fairgrounds or the farmer's market. We're right there, mm -hmm. part of that complex with the agriculture center. As soon as you drive in, you can't miss it on the right. left. The beautiful demonstration gardens, you can stop in there. You can call us on our phone number, the 386-822-5778 number, or you can get us on the internet. Um, but when you come in, plan to be surprised that well, you're going to find how much is going on. And what's cool is the people who come to our informal education come because they want to. Nobody's forced to come right. to all these classes and they just pack out because, hey, grow your own food. You know, learn how to solve your own problems. Maybe take our financial classes and buy your first house. A lot of good stuff going on. All right. Well, Dennis Mudge, the director of the University of Florida Volusia County Cooperative Extension Service, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you. Amber, back to you. Thanks, Joanne, and thank you, too, for watching Volusia Magazine. If you have any questions about the show, you can feel free to give us a call at any of the numbers you see listed here, or you can log on to volusia.org and click on the News tab at the top of the screen to find us. And we hope you won't forget to listen to Volusia Today. That's Volusia County Government's weekly public radio broadcast. Volusia Today airs every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday mornings on the local radio stations you see on your screen. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Amber Osmond, and I hope you have a wonderful evening.